Recently at the Grammys, we saw Ben Affleck, who was fighting with Jennifer Lopez, and the camera was on them, so everybody saw it. They were basically sitting at one of those tables, and um, I guess it was between awards or between sets, and the camera goes up to them, and they don't notice the camera because they're too busy arguing about something but I'm not sure if they're really arguing because right before JLo says something to Ben Affleck she's actually smiling I'm not sure if they were maybe flirting, maybe in an intense way, instead of actually fighting, but most people and most newspapers are saying that they were actually fighting. They tried to pay some lip readers to read what J-Lo is telling Ben Affleck. But I don't really, I mean, I'm sure they're very good at their job of lip reading. You know, that's a very unique and specific job. But the thing is that from what the lip reader says, it doesn't really make sense because the lip reader says that J-Lo and Ben Affleck say to each other, she says to him, look more happy, be more motivated, as if she is trying to encourage Ben and push Ben to be more happy, I guess. Maybe Ben went there in a bad mood. I mean, of course, if you think about it, you know, it's the Grammy right it's not the Oscars so they are a fairly new couple even though they were already a couple back in the 2000s right when they started in films and stuff before Jennifer Gardner before Ben married Jennifer Gardner but right now they are a fairly new couple even though they already know each other from their first relationship 20 years ago more than 20 years ago actually wow Time flies, huh? It's not something like the lip readers are saying that doesn't really make any sense because, you know, first of all, as I said, it looks like she's smiling first. And second of all, it just seems like they might be simply flirting in an intense way, right? Because Ben is saying something to her in her ear. So the lip readers can't really read the lips on Ben when his lips are speaking to J-Lo behind her ears. The other doubt is is they don't notice the camera until they stopped talking or some say bickering. So what happens is the cameraman is, or I don't know if it was a crane or something. Anyways, the camera is going into them and at first they don't notice it. They notice it when the camera is like right up in front of them, right? And obviously what's the level of intimacy you can have, you know, during a live broadcasted worldwide ceremony event, right? I mean, it's kind of tricky. Maybe they didn't like for a moment, you know, sometimes for a moment, you're so so much inside your own thoughts that you just forget, you know, you forget where you are and what you're doing because the the moment between you guys is, is intense or they certainly lost control and the fact that they certainly lost control, you notice it in in their body language but even more in their face when they finally realize that not only is there a camera in front of them but it's probably broadcasting them live at, in that moment right you see that switch it's almost as if JLo and Ben Affleck do a double take to the camera when they notice it it's very it's really strange because at the beginning when they're talking or bickering they may be tense they may be angry with each other we don't know that but whatever their mood was at that time they were behaving naturally right you could see that even though there was some tension in their faces when they were talking to each other their posture was very rigid and closed but still there was a natural feel 
to how they were behaving. And that natural image completely changed when they noticed the camera. It's as if they switched. While they were just talking to each other before the camera, before they noticed the camera, it was J-Lo from the block. You know, it was genuine Ben Affleck. Like, they were being themselves. As soon as they noticed the camera, they didn't know what to do. You could see that split second where the first thing that happened was they saw the camera they noticed something but they weren't sure that there was a camera so they did a double take they look again really quickly they realize yes it is a camera they are broadcasting us live and that's when the other face changed so from confusion of not understanding that there that's a camera to the surprise of realizing that it is a camera to then looking inward so we finally reacting to the fact that it's a camera and when they do react they react in different ways right but the type of reaction is the same so JLo is a bit more smooth more delicate with her transition from being upset with Ben about something to being ready for the uh, camera right being getting camera ready so she just does that by sitting up in a more sexy way maybe or or, you know, just getting more performing for the camera, right? Performing for the audience in a way. And you kind of see it that she instantly becomes JLo from the block again, right? She's really ready for performing. She's ready. She, she's ready for being seen, right? Because before she was not even thinking of being seen. She didn't know she was being followed by the camera, right? Ben, on the other hand, had a different reaction. His reaction was much more tense he went from one type of tense to uh, another type of tense and the second type of tense was a tense that i don't think he was even conscious about i don't think he even realized that he remained tense after he transitioned to ben affleck the movie superstar because after he whispered something in J JLo's ear and they noticed the camera he goes really from zero to 100 in terms of changing from super intimate moment right i mean think about it what's more intimate than whispering in your wife's ear right that's the ultimate level of intimacy right a husband whispering into his uh, wife's ear so he went from that moment of being intimate with j-lo to having the camera in his face and being live on TV. <laughs> so the transition was definitely more funny in Ben, just because Ben thought he transitioned into Ben, the happy actor, but he didn't. He just kind of changed a bit posture. His face seemed like he was sweating or something or like as if he had food poisoning. I don't know if I was if that was just the immediate reaction of having Ben in in front of the camera like that right like I don't think we've ever seen Ben Affleck like that and not even JLo I I think the only other time we've seen JLo be so awkward on camera was some years ago I don't know if it was the Grammys or some Bill board ceremony or something it was a double interview in spanish and it was done by this good journalist and i don't know the journalist's name but it was all in spanish and it was j-lo together with shakira and j-lo i don't know if it was because the interview was in spanish but j-lo does not speak spanish very well apparently i did not know that i thought she spoke uh spanish well but from that interview you could see how awkward JLo gets because obviously Shakira is from Barranquilla in Colombia and she speaks perfect Spanish her ex-husband the soccer player Pique is also Spanish so she's lived in Barcelona so she, she knows how to speak Spanish and JLo was not really enjoying that interview because you could see that the journalist was speaking in Spanish, Sha 
Shakira was speaking Spanish and J-Lo would just kind of be silent, awkward, just say a couple of Spanish words, mix them together with some English words. So that was a bit awkward. That was the only time I saw J-Lo as awkward, right? So the whole thing of being a celebrity and fighting in public, that's probably another level, right? Because I mean, you know, what couple has hasn't had a fight, right? I would say everyone has had a fight as a couple. Definitely privately, like in the home or in bed, right? Probably not everyone has fought in public or I'm sure most people do whatever they can to not fight in public, right? Because that's like one of the most embarrassing things ever. That's why you see it, you always see it still in in so many movies, right? Because those scenes are always probably some of the funniest because everybody can relate to it, right? Everybody can identify with that situation, right? Either being the angry part, there's always two types in a fight in a couple. There's different types of fights in couples. You have the fight in a couple where the woman doesn't it's usually the woman this type of couple fighting is usually the woman that is the one that is the only one who knows that they're fighting that they're arguing like he doesn't know they're arguing but she thinks they're arguing right so the two people in the cup this couple's fight have two different types of information about what's going on in the couple the partner one partner thinks that the couple is as uh, fighting about something the other partner in the couple doesn't even know that the other person is angry about something so those types of fights usually end when the other partner finally realizes that his or her partner thinks that they're fighting about something even though they're not fighting about something so that's usually like how they resolve it by them being able to talk and communicate so that's the probably the simplest type of fight but then you know changing type of fights the the classic type of fight is usually you fighting at home and it's usually about something silly or stupid probably having to do something with the the house you know some chores somebody didn't do or the dishes somebody didn't clean you know it's always something it always starts out with something silly or petty right but it's not in public right it's still private another type of fight uh, is obviously in the car right because there's always a uh, one person in the couple who thinks they can drive better than the other or that oh who there's always somebody who wants to ask for directions and another person who doesn't want to ask for directions and it also depends usually it's easier to fight if you spend more time in a car because you have more time to hash things out those road trips are always a good reason to bond with each other and share time but they could it could also be risky because if you're not already in a couple where there is love and respect if there if you're in a couple that already has some cracks if you take a long road trip and you're star in the, you're stuck in the car with your significant other there's a big chance that uh, you're going to end that trip not as a couple anymore right because usually what happens in long trips together is you know old stuff starts to come out and you start to fight that's probably why also some of the types of public fighting that is most common is tourist couples how often have you seen a couple of tourists uh, fighting with each other you know in Times Square or uh, Union Square and you know you could totally see their tourists because you know they're not they're not speaking your language and you know they're, they're they're dressed as tourists with a bunch of Hollywood clothes or New York clothes you know the usual tourist fashion and those fights are interesting because these people are tourists right so that means that not only do i mean first of all they have the stress of the trip 
trips can be stressful and they can be stressful for two reasons one because they can be stressful because of the things in the past that start to pop up the second reason they can be stressful is because when you're on a trip you are stressed about everything right i mean from even before the trip you're already stressed right because you already need to book you know am i going to go to airbnb and be more stressed because airbnb now has fifty thousand rules that you have to respect every time you go to airbnb about how to close the door how to shut the door how to keep the windows how to use the electricity you know so many rules that you know maybe it's less stressful to go to a hotel okay you go to a hotel you know there's the stress of the flight of you know whether or not you have children that's like you know 50 times more stressful but let's just say normal couple it's still stressful and you don't know where you are you're in different country different time zone you're jet lagged so there's lots of reasons to fight as a tourist but the other thing is when tourists fight in public they fight more than usual people because when you're fighting in your own neighborhood or even your own city it's like the isn't there a proverb don't clean your laundry or something don't clean your laundry outside in public in public or something right like you don't air your dirty laundry in public or something especially where this is especially applies where, to where you live right because the closer you are to your house house the less chances there are of you fighting in public or at least in fighting in an intense way in public you're not going to fight in an intense way in public if you're right next door right because you're not because your neighbors know you and if your neighbors know you they can call the police on you obviously you don't want the people around you that you see either because of location or socially to see you as an angry person but even more so they don't want you to see you as someone who is in an unhappy couple right because if you're just an angry person people can say you know you're a jerk and they don't like you but in a way you receive some respect from other people but if you're in a bad relationship a lot of other people around you are going to judge you more negatively than if you're just kind of like an angry person right you're going to lose more respect if people know that you're in an unsuccessful couple right they'll kind of see you as a loser so there's lots of reasons why people don't want to fight in public closer to their house but that's exactly the advantage of fighting in public as a tourist is nobody really knows you so that's also probably why there's so many videos of people fighting on airplanes airplanes have become like almost the number one place for people to fight in public but in airplanes there's not a lot of couples fighting in airplanes you know like between each other partner against partner usually the airplane it's stranger against stranger so couples if there are couples usually fighting in airplanes it's usually couples the couple itself both of the partners in the couple against a stranger against someone else that's much more common but again the best way in a certain sense to fight in public is to just fight in in times square in like the most public place possible you can imagine in new york for example if you're not from new york as a tourist in new york because nobody knows you there's so many people everybody's distracted by so many things that actually even though you would think that from a shyness or a discretion point of view you you would think that people would want to avoid fighting in such a public place like Times Square in New York as a tourist that's probably the best place that's definitely much better than you know a more closed public space like you know the gate at the airport or even 
even worse, the airplane itself. So I think you would steer clear as a tourist couple fighting in public in closed places where you know you're going to spend a lot of time with people. Because if you fight on a train or on a boat or whatever, you know, any means of transportation, it can get ugly very quickly. And even if it doesn't get ugly, you're basically still stuck inside a container because let's face it a train an airplane they are just very dangerous containers that's all they are containers so if you're stuck in a container that's going 500 miles per hour i think that's enough you know you don't need more stress by fighting with with your significant other in such a place now i don't remember have i ever had a fight with any of my exes in public yeah but i don't think so i th i think maybe once but i think that time we didn't really fight in public we just had we were like smart enough to just realize you're about to fight about something and and tell each other, you know, let's, let's talk about it at home. I think this usually that's the smartest move. If you want to be smart and you know that you're going to fight in public, just have the sense and hopefully you have the partner that has the same common sense as you to just be able to say to each other, we're, we're going to talk about this at home. Let's talk about this at home. Who knows? Maybe Ben, that's what Ben was whispering in JLo's ear. Like, let's just relax and talk about this at home because that's usually the smartest thing that anyone can do that's usually what smart people do right they basically have the ability to make sure you don't do anything embarrassing public because it's all about being embarrassed right it's not really about anything else most verbal fights are verbal thank goodness because you don't want it to get ugly to get ugly too quickly right and and especially when it's a guy and a girl fighting, there's always the chance that some people might misunderstand them fighting and might do usually what is the worst thing possible someone could do, which is go up to them, try to break up the fight. That's usually where the really bad fights happen. The really bad general fights happen and when usually like, a couple of is fighting and then a third person joins in maybe with good intentions to break up the 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 fight but usually what ends up happening is that even when the third person goes to up to break the fight usually one of the two partners in the couple who are fighting think or assume that the third person is actually not going there to break up the fight but is actually going there to defend the other person so one of the two people one of the part two partners fighting thinks that the third person is actually to get them and that's where the usually becomes physical and it usually becomes a, that's how usually brawls start but the usual public fights usually happen you know right away it goes from zero to 100 one of the two partners starts it you know right off the bat the partner who starts the fight usually does it in a way that is so quick and the change in behavior is so quick that usually the other partner has no idea what's going on you know when you see a couple fighting and let's say the girl is shouting at the guy and the guy is just stunned he doesn't know how to react yet that's how you know a fight between a couple has just started if you hear something and you look over and one of the two partners is kind of like paralyzed and blocked and stunned while the other is already going at it that usually means that the fight just started so the other person hasn't even had the time to react or even understand where this other person is coming from like what are you talking about right because women usually what happens is when they start arguing with you about something, 
when they start fighting with you uh, about something and they initiate it, they don't initiate it by actually explaining what they're saying, like what they're angry about. Because in her head, she's already, and these aren't all women, this is just an example of some type of people. And basically, she what she does is she starts arguing as if you guys had already been arguing for an entire day. So when she starts shouting at you her arguments, it's not usually even making any sense to you because you don't even know where she's coming from. But in her head, she's been upset about this thing, whatever it is. She's been upset about this for an entire day. So in her head, she's been arguing with you already for a whole day. In her head, she's already had a series of conversations with you about this in her head. But you haven't. You've just gone about your day. You woke up, you got your coffee, you went to work, whatever you did. It was just another day for you. And here she is. You know, as you're preparing dinner and she goes off on you about something you have no idea about. And this happens both in private and in public. And you have no idea what she's arguing about. It probably takes you a good half hour of her tearing into you and shouting at you to for you to actually be able to put the pieces together, right? Because... She's she if she, if you ask like what's going on, she doesn't even answer you. What she does is she responds with so, some of her more uh, some of her questions about the thing. So it just becomes even more mysterious because instead of her answering your questions about what what this is, she's just asking you. You know, like you're going like, hey baby, what what are you talking about? And she's like, don't baby me. You know what you you know exactly what I'm talking about. Did, wasn't it you that said this and that? And you're like, what? You're completely lost. But fighting in public will never go away, right? Fighting in public is one, you know, one of the things we do best. We fight in public better than we do technology or science. We're really good at fighting. There's always a good reason to argue in public, but it's about being able to de-escalate the situation. And arguing in public is definitely something that should be avoided for various reasons. Nothing good can come out of you fighting in public with your partner. Probably if you are fighting in public with your partner, that's probably a very good sign that maybe, just maybe, you guys shouldn't be together anymore. Because if you can't even control your fighting, you won't have anything. That's a clear sign of how bad things are going. Because if that's how bad things are going that you can't even control how you fight and where you fight and when you fight, but you're just fighting all over the place. Clearly, the relationship is over. Clearly, the relationship has ended. There's no reason why you should be together with someone who is either able to provoke you up to a point where you explode in public or someone that is so crazy that they're constantly starting fights with you in public either way whether it's you starting the fight in public or whether it's the other person it's a clear message that the couple is not working out and there are two types of fighting in public the Fighting in public where you're in front of strangers and fighting in public where 
you're in front of friends or family. If you fight, you know, in public, but it's on the street and it's surrounded by strangers, it's one thing and it's fine. It's, it's, it's better than fighting in public, but the people watching you are literally your friends or your family. I think if you are fighting in front of your friends or family, that's even worse. And that's even a more clear message of how you should not be together with that other person. Because if you're fighting in public, that's probably a symptom, uh, a symptom of something deeper, something that happened before the fight, right? It's always the stuff that we carry around that we can't get rid of. And when we think we can get rid of it, we get rid of it in the worst ways possible, like, for example, fighting in public. But I'm sure there will be plenty of more interesting uh, fights in public, especially now that everybody can watch everything and everybody can record everything especially people fighting on the street. It's not a good thing. It's not a positive thing, fighting in, in, uh, in public. But it is a natural thing. It is part of society. And it is also part of pop culture when these things are starting to happen more and more often in the public eye, whether it's TV or online. And it's definitely a genre in gossip, the genre of public fights. There have been so many of so many huge stars from the elevator with the security cameras, with Solange and Jay-Z, to so many others. I think there's going to be a continuous amount of such types of fights, both for us to watch in the public eye and for us to experience, unfortunately, at home. But the thing is, if you're in a couple where you're fighting in public, you need to stop fighting in public and stop seeing that person. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button. Please subscribe and hit the bell and watch this next video.